why you can't lose weight, five key tests to find the root cause of weight loss resistance. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to cover one of the most common issues that I see and something that impacts tons and tons of people, weight loss resistance. And specifically, we're gonna cover how to identify the root cause of weight loss resistance so you can end the guessing game and get clarity on what you actually need to do to lose weight once and for all. So I'm gonna walk through the five most important tests to have done, what they mean, how they impact your ability to drop body fat easily and kind of what you can do about it. And watch to the end, because after seeing this entire video, I think you're going to understand why your hard effort with nutrition and exercise is not paying off as well as it should. So for those of you who do not know me, I'm Andrew Martin. I'm a human biologist, and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people overcome weight loss resistance, balance their hormones, heal their gut, and optimize their health and performance over the last 10 years. And over that time, I've had tons of clients come to me saying their doctor wouldn't give them the test that they wanted, or they already had this type of testing done and they didn't get to the root cause of the problem and what they were doing wasn't working. But once I look at what they went through as far as testing and assessment goes, it's clear that they didn't have nearly enough done to figure out why that they were having the issues that they were having. They simply had some tests done that might look for hormone imbalances or some basic nutrient deficiencies or their lipid panel, right? Their metabolic panel. But getting to the root cause of a problem is not just finding a problem and then taking a supplement for it or taking a medication for it. It's finding out what the problem is and then figuring out why you have that problem. For example, I had a client come to me just a few weeks ago whose doctor told her that she was hypothyroid and she wanted better answers than just thyroid medication. So we took, we took her through the five tests that I'm going to share with you and found nutrient deficiencies that were essential to her functioning for a good functioning thyroid, inflammation, leaky gut, and SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. She was also overstressed and very under-recovered. So we were able to build her a personalized protocol to address the underlying issues that were impacting her thyroid versus just giving her medication. And I had another client that started recently who never had any comprehensive testing done. She just had her standard 19 biomarker panel that you get when you go to your annual, annual physical. And she was tracking her macros, she was exercising regularly, but nothing was working. Turns out she had insulin resistance, three toxic heavy metal exposures uh, in her system, including arsenic, low microbial diversity, poor sleep, and two gut infections. And all of that combined was preventing her from losing weight. It was creating the weight loss resistance. And macros and exercise were not going to help. So let's dive into what these tests are and how they can help us identify the cause of weight loss resistance. Test number one is comprehensive blood work. Now I'm labeling this as one test, but there are over a hundred biomarkers in here. So we want to see a lot of things. So I'm going to break this down into subcategories. The first subcategory is blood sugar regulation. There are a lot of markers inside of this that we want to see. Um, the main ones being fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, fasting insulin. But the reason why this is important is because if we have poor glucose disposal, meaning your blood sugar stays high in your blood, your body has to do something with it. And that means it's going to get stored as body fat. And in my next video, we're going to cover blood sugar regulation in depth. So look out for that. But blood sugar regulation is very, very important. We want to see metrics along, that, along those lines. The next subcategory is hormones. Now, most people think about their sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, when they think of their hormones. And while these do matter, they can be highly variable throughout the day, over the course of a menstrual cycle, vary based on your sleep and your stress. So we do want to see these, but we also want to look for the precursors of your sex hormones like DHEA and pregnenolone, which are made by your adrenal glands alongside of cortisol and cortisone and a bunch of other hormones. If our adrenals are not functioning properly, we can end up with things like chronic fatigue and low sex hormones. And so we look at those hormones in the blood. We also look at them in your saliva, which we'll talk about later. Additionally, we want to see a full thyroid panel. So you don't just want to look at TSH. TSH is an important piece of the puzzle, but it's not the whole story when we talk about your thyroid. And most of the time when you go to a doctor, you are just going to get your TSH done. And that's incredibly frustrating because we miss a large piece of the story here. And especially when it comes to weight loss res resistance. So TSH is the hormone that's made in your pituitary gland, and it tells your brain to make thyroid hormone, which is T4. A percentage of T4 gets converted into T3. And a percentage of T4 and T3 are free, which means that they're available of your, for your body to use. So free T3 is the one that's really, really important. It's, the, it's essentially the gas pedal on the metabolism. It says, metabolism, go. Reverse T3 is the opposite. It's the brake on your metabolism. So if you've got the foot on the gas and the foot on the brake at the same time, what happens? Nothing. So we want to make sure that the ratios between free T3 and reverse T3 are appropriate. Because if not, then we could be doing a lot of work and getting no results on the back end. Okay? So... We, we need that ratio to be strong for just an appropriate functioning thyroid. And the last two markers here are for assessing uh, Hashimoto's, which can also lead to hypothyroidism and thyroid dysfunction. 
There are two other hormones that we look at in the blood as well. The first one is insulin, which we talked about a little bit when it comes to blood sugar regulation. And the mechanism for weight gain behind insulin resistance is poor blood sugar regulation. We can't handle it well, and so we store it as fat. But the other hormone is that's super fascinating is leptin. And leptin is our satiety hormone. It tells us that we're full. The problem is when we develop leptin resistance. So anytime we talk about resistance to a hormone, what we mean is there's too much of it circulating in our blood and the body begins to ignore the signal. In the case of leptin resistance, we begin to ignore the signal of satiety. And this leads to increases in hunger and craving. So the crazy part is that leptin is produced by your body fat cells. So the more fat we have, the more likely we are to become leptin resistant and gain more weight from it, okay? Subcategory three is micronutrients. Micronutrients play a critical role in metabolism hormone production, cognition, cardiovascular health, and just about every area of your health and performance. Most people just get their vitamin D checked though, if they're lucky, and their sodium and potassium in their metabolic panel. We look at over 50 different micronutrients. So I'll just leave it at that. But you want to find the ones that you are deficient in, obviously. And they are important for a lot of different reasons. But the ones that you don't want to miss, magnesium, iron, iodine, selenium, vitamin D, omega-3, B12, folate, vitamin A, methylmalonic acid, copper, zinc, those are some very, very critical micronutrients that we want to see. Subcategory four is inflammatory markers. Your inflammatory status tells us a lot about your chronic systemic inflammation, but that has a massive impact on metabolism and fat loss, hormones, cardiovascular health, brain function, and more. And a few key markers that we want to look at when it comes to inflammation are C-reactive protein, ferritin, and homocysteine. But really, these just tell us that you are inflamed not really where the inflammation is coming from. So we need to dive deeper to figure out what's actually causing the inflammation. And often it's food reactions or poor gut health, inflammatory oils, processed food that we're eating, or just overall bad recovery, really poor recovery. So we also want to look in depth uh, at your immune health, your kidney function, your liver function, and your cardiovascular health in your blood as well. Okay, moving on to test number two, salivary hormones. I, I figured we'd jump into this next since we already touched on it a little bit, but the salivary hormones test, we're looking at your adrenal and your sex hormones in your saliva. And the reason we do it is because our cortisol, which is one of our adrenal hormones, changes over the course of the day. It rises and falls, and it's supposed to do that, but it's really hard to capture that in one blood draw. You can't capture it in one blood draw. We need to capture it over the course of the day in four different points. And unless you want to go to the lab four times a day, we got to figure out a different way, and we use a saliva test just because it's more practical. So we take a saliva sample in the morning, the early after afternoon, late afternoon, and before bed, and we can look at your cortisol and how those levels fluctuate over the course of the day. And often uh, people will have really low cortisol levels where they'll be tired all the time. Maybe they have low sex drive and they don't feel resilient to stress. Other people might have the opposite problem. They have very high cortisol where it feels like they're stressed and on edge of the time, they have trouble sleeping. Either way, both of these things can, can cause weight gain and specifically midsection weight gain. So if your adrenals are not functioning well, we often have to look deeper into your sleep, into your recovery, into your stress management, into your gut in order to see the full picture. But most people will just stop after seeing higher low cortisol and give you a medication or a supplement. And this is not addressing the root cause of the issue. It might be an important piece of the puzzle to take supplements, but we're not addressing the root cause that way. Test number three is a comprehensive microbiome analysis. This is, in, this is your stool. And this is by far my, most favorite, my, my favorite test. We're going to look deep into your gut health here. And I love it so much because it shows what the root cause of our issues are very, very often. We can see if you have microbial imbalances, inflammation in the gut, bacterial overgrowth, digestive insufficiency, malabsorption, and a number of other things. So, so, so much in here. And so if you want to heal, I, I think it starts with a healthy gut. And if you want to heal your hormones or repair your metabolism, this is absolutely critical. So we can even begin to see if your microbiome is putting you at risk for obesity with the FB ratio, that's firmicutes to bacteriodetes. And this ratio is critical because um, those are two phyla of bacteria. And when, it, when that ratio is too high, it suggests that our microbes are going to make us hyper absorb calories. So when we eat, you're supposed to absorb some of the calories, but not all of the calories from your food. In the case of someone with a high FB ratio, you actually hyper absorb calories. You absorb way more of them. And so those extra calories get stored as body fat. And as far as intervention goes, when it comes to gut health, it really depends on your unique constraint. You may need help digesting your food. You may need to reduce inflammation. You may need to add healthy microbes to the gut. It really depends. But the possibilities here are endless, and it gives us a very personalized approach for each person. Test number four is food reaction. So food sensitivities are highly debated, whether they're good or bad, as far as testing goes. But I have found them incredibly helpful for people with weight loss resistance, not because when they cut out these foods, they magically lose weight that they are reactive to. But when they do reduce those foods that are causing an immune and inflammatory response, they can actually give their body a better chance to heal the other issues that are causing weight loss resistance. Those may be, you know, hormonal balances or gut issues, whatever they might be. 
And so the intervention here is simple. You essentially just remove those foods for two to three months and you do the other things that you are, you work on the other things that you are deficient in. Test number five is toxic heavy metals. Now toxic heavy metals like mercury and arsenic have a strong influence on metabolism, two ways. First, they can displace the essential micronutrients for metabolism like magnesium and zinc. So they essentially replace those, um, but they can also cause oxidative stress. The first step for correcting heavy metals in your system is identifying where you're exposed to these things. And they can happen in more places than you think. Your water, your food, your household products, you know, just things in your home. And so we want to figure out where those are coming from first, and then we can go through what's called and, and remove them. And then we can go through what's called a chelation protocol to extract the heavy metals from our tissues and bring them into the bloodstream and then capture them in the bloodstream and dispose of them. So those are the five main tests, but here's the catch. None of these tests by themselves are going to help you figure out the root cause of the problem. And even all those five tests together will help, but they don't give us the full picture. We still don't have the entire picture on what's going on. We have what's going on inside of you, but we also need to understand what's going on outside of you that's influencing what's going on inside of you. And what I mean by that is the root cause of the problem is often things like poor sleep, high stress, bad hydration, inflammatory foods, right? These things that are happening outside of us. And so we need to be able to connect these tests to your habits in order to identify what the real problem is and create a protocol to fix it for good. But nobody does that because it takes a lot of time. It takes me three to four days to analyze one person's assessment results. Your doctor has 15 minutes with you, max. So you're never gonna go there and figure out the, the root cause of the problem. And most people aren't willing to dive this deep into the data and connect all the dots together, or they just don't know how to do that to help you. So this assessment process is exactly how Pam, Dave, Jen, and Christy, and hundreds of other people were able to identify their the root cause of their weight loss resistance so they can fix it for good. So if you're struggling with weight loss resistance and you want to go through this exact process so you can get answers and and finally figure out why it is that you can't drop body fat, just click the link in the description below and book a call with me. I'll send you over our assessment. We'll get on a call together and we'll review the assessment and I'll ask some more questions to figure out what the best path is for you moving forward. So hit the link, pick a time, and I'll see you there. And if you don't see any times that work, you can just shoot me a message on Instagram and we'll figure out something that works. The link for my Instagram direct messages is also in the description. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful and kind of showed you what you can do to get to the root cause and I'll see you in the next one.